Hi, I'm Jenny from 20 by Jenny, and we're here today to talk to Sharon Creech, whose new book is The Unfinished Angel. You may know Sharon from Walk Two Moons, which won the Newbery Medal, The Wanderer, which got a Newbery Honor book, and one of my favorites, which is Love That Dog. We have a treat in store today because Sharon is here with her editor, Joanna Kotler, and we're just going to kind of listen in. Excellent. Hi, I'm Joanna Kotler, Sharon Creech's editor, and this is Sharon Creech. Hi. And we're here in New York. Sharon's about to go on tour, so we thought we'd talk to you guys a little bit, and we're going to talk to each other. We have Love That Dog, and Hate That Cat, the companion book, and Sharon's new book, The Unfinished Angel. Ah. Which is fabulous. It's a cute one. Isn't that cute? It's so beautiful, too. I it's all spanky it. and new. <laughs> this came out of you living in Switzerland right. last year. Right. Uh, so last two, two years two ago. Years ago. Two years ago. Right. You were living in Switzerland, you were living in, in this tiny little village. Yes. And it was it was I remember you saying to me, you know, I'm hearing all these languages. It's Italian or speaking Italian and <laughs> I've got the English in my head and I'm kind of losing my English and you know, it was kind of confusing, right? Right. And then suddenly something began to happen. It, right. it was this um, what your what your your granddaughter right. had said something to you. She a had said years ago. she was two years old. She told her first story. It went like this. Once upon a time in Spain, there was an angel, and the angel was me. The end. <laughs> and I was okay. like, wow. How does she know how to start a story like that? Granted, she didn't continue. And then finish it, though. And then finish it. And then how does she know what an angel is? And especially, how does she know what Spain is? And I later found out that my daughter had been reading Ferdinand the Bull to her. Oh, and it starts out, once upon a time in Spain, there was a bull. I think that's how it starts. Well, anyway, so I thought that would be just the best story. You know, maybe she was an angel in Spain. You know, I don't know. So I would think about it. I tried for years and years to write that story, but I couldn't until we went to Switzerland, and we were returning to a place where we had lived 25 years before, so it was familiar to me, but as soon as we got on campus, I saw this old stone tower. It's about 400 years old, and it has an open air balcony at the top, and I thought, that's where the angel would live. And that, combined with learning Italian and not being able to speak correctly, that became the angel's voice, because I was suddenly seeing all this anew through the eyes of this angel. This is what I find so fascinating, though, in this process, because by the time something comes to me, Sharon has managed to pull together all these things into a story, you know? Mm -hmm. And from all these different uh, unconscious, uh, unconscious uh, uh, ideas and subjects and non-thoughts comes this story. Right. This story right. that really, then, when by the time it gets to me, I can see all the different levels that you've been uh, thinking. That's what's so right. fascinating to me. And there's this angel, and there's this little town, and the angel doesn't really exactly speak a language that we would understand, but we understand right. enough. Right. She uses yeah. words in a really funny way, like instead of love, she says, I loaf this. Right. And she would call where we're sitting right now very attractiful. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of English, but English with a twist. So that's that's what, right. and I thought it was just the most genius, <laughs> genius way that you channeled your own experience of being in some place where you were kind of feeling all they're all turned around in a kind of yeah. wonderful way, you know. Yeah. Um, and it came in, and to me, and I laughed my head off. Right. It's hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. And I thought because she was telling me about it over the phone. I thought, oh, it's, there's an angel, and she's narrating. And it's, oh, oh my god. <laughs> you know, like how can I'm this possibly work? I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be really bad. <laughs> Sure, what to think? Although, how can I not trust her? It's always been good. But it's like, okay, I don't know where she's gone now, but it's right, going to be interesting. Right, right. So, wow, it's so great to get the manuscript, though, to get this thing and have it land in my lap, oh, and then have that first conversation where we yeah. laughed our head off as yeah. I call on this. Yes, well, no, and you I... talked about subtlety before. There's that scene when the orphans embrace Mr. Oh, Pomodoro and at, at their at the knees and he yeah. gets teary right and there's so there's that moment and then you segue right into the next scene which is also that very moving scene about um the, the puppets the puppets i love that exactly. scene. oh, that oh yeah you don't have any puppets with you do you i do where did i oh my put god it? Oh, wait, sharon started making this. puppets um, well no i didn't my daughter your daughter okay the thing is that and scene I, they make the puppet and oh that and Zola, who's not thing. the most giving child, no. you know, you find out just how giving she is as the story progresses, but that yeah. moment where she realizes 
Yes, look, 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 look. This is oh, a real Oh, you have one. <laughs> look at that. Look at this, this is smaller than the one, the way it's described in the book. But both my granddaughter oh, and my daughter made this one. My granddaughter stuffed oh. the body with cotton. It is so it's squishy. It's really beautiful, cute. though. Cute. Is that cute or what? Oh, so, yes, in the book, Zola, the American girl, um, is feeling very badly about this old woman, Signora Mando Poco, who's thinks she's going to die, and the angel's like, well, yes. She's <laughs> so, an old, old lady. Old lady, and That's this is right. what happens to old ladies. You know, the, the angel's kind of jaded about all this. And, and um, but she can tell Zola's bothered, so she says, why don't you make it, her a poppet? She likes pop. She likes little dollies. They're like, it's like a little talisman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it goes with me everywhere. Kind of, and you definitely have the sense that she's holding on to that as she's yes. letting go. Oh, right, like, yeah. So the, yes, yeah, Senora Mandapoco holds it. First she introduces it to her old dolly. Now this came from the 96-year-old, this ties in too completely with this right. book. The 96-year-old founder of the school where we went in Switzerland was alive when we went there and she lived in the villa attached to the tower. And she... One, she's a very smart woman. She founded schools all over the world. She's internationally known, very sharp with it, even at 96. But she pulled out of her purse, she said, look what I have. She had a little dolly. It wasn't this kind of doll, but it was a soft doll like that. And we were like, <laughs> right. this is Flemmy? You know, you, <laughs> you smart, worldly, multicultural, many language speaking woman. And, but she was starting to, she said, I'm getting young, younger in my mind. Mm. And she just had this little dolly, oh. you know. And then she turned it to me and said, Hi, Sharon. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, that comes out in the book. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, who knows? I just use all the bits and pieces. This is what I find really interesting is when she does this, to look at it, to read it, and to see what do those threads mean in there. Are they all kind of connecting in some way? And that's yeah. really what we talk about, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Well, and oh, that I whole, the whole sort of, in all of your books, you have those intertwining journeys. Mm. And here, it's much subtler. It's not a physical journey in the way that Walk Two Moons is or The Wanderer. Right. But there is that sense of this whole village where people have gone off and come back and right. their lives and the are so intertwined. And the young and, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I think, you know what happened, especially with this book, what I felt was, I'm just going to do a little bit each day. I'm going to take a piece of this village each day, as if the angel is kind of in her tower looking, you know, at that bit, at that bit, at that bit, the rock walls, the lizards, the, 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 and show just a little bit each day. And so each day I wrote the one little bit. And, and yet the challenge always is, to, okay, it has to tie in, it has to make sense, otherwise it sounds like just a list of things. And that, to me, is the most fun part about writing, is, is seeing, yeah. you don't know when you're writing it how it's going to relate to everything else, yeah. but you know, you tr I trust now that it does, that it will relate, and sure enough, maybe it might be two chapters later, I see, oh my gosh, that's because, you know, the, the holes in the wall exist because people have something to give to put in them and they don't have something to give until the children come back and da 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 da, da. So you trust your process. I and trust the, is, the process. It's incredible. And you know, Sharon is, a lot of people can't articulate their process, but Sharon once said to me, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, something like, you know, sometimes when I don't know what to do, I take a nap. Yeah. Oh. You know, and then I wake Always. up from that nap, and my unconscious is doing the work. Right. Right. Seriously, I think right. that that's the most brilliant thing in the world, because that's where it's coming from, and then you trust the process. Right. And you've been doing exactly. this process for a long time, but it's not just that. It's right. something about how it comes out of you, and somehow right. you really trust it. It allows you to go to a deeper level, to yeah. the more subconscious yeah. level. Yeah. Because if you're, you know, a lot of times, there's all that stuff going up, there's life going on, you know, the laundry and the washer breaks, and then the plumbing, right. other plumbing right. pipe breaks, and there's a big spider over there. And there's all these distractions, the phone is ringing, the fax is going, and you're trying to write your little scene, and so sometimes you just have to write the scene and trust it and then go, I go away, I take a nap and it clears all that surface clutter away and it allows me to go to the deeper part where, what does it mean? Mm -hmm.